We think about different things in our, our downtime. <laughs> you think about different things? Yeah. What do you think about? Uh, well, not, not that. Pick up the hard line. There's no time. You're going to have to get to another exit. He's got a key around here. No time for love, Dr. Jones. There's no time for... No time for the podcast. <laughs> uh, no, I can't be bothered with that. I have no time for that sort of nonsense. Hey! Shorts, did you move? It's my new home here in Palo Alto. <laughs> Palo Alto. You're second so home. bougie. Sorry, second You're home. So bougie. Some, uh, some funds I cashed in on over the last uh, four or five years. Or... Playing around money? <laughs> Something like that. It's about time. Holy fuck, look at all the gray. Not even gray, just white. <laughs> I gotta admit, Jason, it... I see London, I see France. Oh, man, let me see your shirt. shirt. You see underpants? See some, yeah, like, uh, it looks like it looks like Scotland, Ireland. It's just, this looks Great Britainish back there on the wall. Oh, yep. that's definitely that. Yeah. Where are you, old man? My office. So it's a new program, so I don't have a background set up, and it's on a hard drive somewhere that I don't have readily available. Apparently. Ah. One second, my mom's calling. Hold on. Need <laughs> <laughs> to show. Great, great way to start. You recording? Oh, it's always recording. <laughs> Will this hit the cutting room floor? Or not? Uh, depends how it goes. I mean, it should, but it won't. Got to take that call from Luce. Yeah, you, know, you never know how important somebody calling from within the same house is. Schwartz, is that a real background, or is that a is that part of the the Google uh, whatever the hell we're using uh, uh, inventory? Yeah, I like Google's more than you know. I, I use like three other applications. I feel for work and various things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, these are really nice. Actually, I want to go with one of these. We started using this one for the job I'm currently at. So, like, but Zoom was trying to charge me for a different thing that I, wasn't the meetings. It was like someone saying for twenty four dollars for a year, and then I could upgrade to the meetings because I had accidentally let it lapse the other couple months ago. So they're trying to upsell me. Well, well, on the subject of monetizing this podcast, uh, yeah. you know, I was, was going to bring this up at the end, but I'll just go jump in now while Pete's not listening. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was thinking recently about uh, how the 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 military and U.S. intelligence has been infiltrating media for the last fifty years or so. Uh, any, I don't know if they've gotten into podcasts yet. So, any interest in selling out to like the CIA or NSA or anything? We can spread some prop propaganda and make some money. To so that one person in Germany that we have following us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we could do that. Definitely, I'm willing to sell out. So whoever we, we, we think about different things in our our downtime. <laughs> you think about different things. Yeah. What do you think about? Uh, well, not not that. I think about sports and like, what can I do to retire as soon as possible? You figured that I mean, out yet? <laughs> I'm not. No. It was it wasn't a subject I was lingering on. It just, you know, I was reading something else and, and the idea struck me and uh, I filed it away and I moved on with my day. Yeah, mm -hmm. we should definitely find a way to monetize us. That'd be, that'd be helpful. <laughs> However that is. Wait, what is somebody that? making money? Highest, highest bidder. <laughs> Are we getting paid? Uh, we have officially made $17.48. There's no way we've made money. There's no way. <laughs> In five years, yes. <laughs> Remember those first couple of years where we were putting ads in front of everything? Yeah. We made $17.48 off that. Do we have to file W-2? Because I haven't. No, no, no. It, it goes straight to the... Uh, Do we have an LLC that we're paying <laughs> them? The beer fund, so... It's okay. reinvested in the business? Yeah. Fully tax deductible then. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. This might not even record. I have no idea what I get out of this at, at the end of the day. So it might be another lost episode. Who wants to? Ooh, jeez, what was that? Fucking a. Everything's moving. Anybody okay. else got any other green room items before we start? Peter, where were you? You were at North Twenty. Is that where you said? We were. Uh, so the Roseland High School was playing uh, Eastridge for soccer. So Ax wasn't playing yet because of the surgery, but we yeah. were. And then we we stopped at North Twenty. So I've had a, I've had three beers. You know, doing a little day drinking. Nice. Um, and I figured four might just put me over the top where I'd just be sleeping. So three was my cutoff. <laughs> I'm good. headed to a Mormon wedding reception tonight. Um, I should probably be three drinks in right now, but I'm not. Yeah, it's because not there won't be I, I believe there won't be any dancing either. I'm pretty <laughs> sure of that. So you wife swapping? Like, is that cool with the Mormons or no? Mm. I, I'm not too familiar. With, nah, what what are they into? Partner swapping? Sorry, partner swapping. Yeah, but I don't think you know anything about Mormons. 
I don't. Well, I no, obviously. I mean, the, the the whole multiple wives things doesn't mean that the wives are shared amongst multiple husbands. It's still one man, many wives. That sounds like a. a Unless you run the church, then you, you get dibs. It's them swapping with you. <laughs> you they, they get your wife, but not vice versa. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, we'll just let my ignorance shine through on Mormonism. <laughs> but in my defense, I'm that ignorant on pretty much all religious sex. So it's That's not just Mormonism. Yeah. Spell that, please. You're just you're ignorant about sex in general. S e c t s. All right. I haven't had that many drinks, guys. Let let's just for fun. Let's have you tell us everything you know about Islam and see what actually gets uh, makes the cut. How many seconds do you have? The Quran. There we go. That's <laughs> there we go. Yep. And I didn't say there's an and. Oh no. I'm just gonna. You but just, it goes for Christianity too. Do you want to draw a funny picture of anything? Do you just organize all your religious knowledge by who will let you eat bacon and who won't? Well, it doesn't not factor in. Yeah. Are they pro-bacon or anti-bacon? Who? Islam? Yeah. I think they're... No good. Not pro-bacon. Yeah. So probably not going to convert. But you do more than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the, the anti-beef ones you have a problem with. Ugh. Right. Preach. <laughs> yep. Uh, is East Ridge the other weird Woodbury school? Is that what mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. That's the yeah. good one. Yeah. Like you walk in and then you walk down into the the stadium area. Gotcha. They got a bowl? Quasi. It's just on the one side more that you walk down. So it's not like it goes up on the other side. Oh. If that makes sense. Right. But yeah, like where you check your ticket in and you go straight down. Not bad. Probably a little nicer than Rosemont, which is, you know, a 19... 60s school, I think. You know, it's the oldest district, school in the district by far. District stadium hasn't changed much, you're saying? They did get a new uh, turf field a couple of years back. So they got that going for them, which is nice. That is what matters. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, they have a sweet dome, don't they? Well, they have a dome. I don't know if I'd use the adjective sweet. It's <laughs> my, uh, so years ago when I actually had practice, and like that's when I would still stay at practice, I put my phone down on the bench. This is in the middle of winter. And my phone died because it was so cold on the bench. <laughs> the metal <laughs> was so chilly that it killed my phone. <laughs> about like 50, 50 degrees, 55 degrees or something like that in there. So Yeah, Logan often had uh, baseball tryouts in that in that dome. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot in the off season. It was just dirty, grimy. I've been to better domes. And then you go to Woodbury, they have like a, uh, you know, in the last eight, 10 years, like a new facility out there where X would have practice. Uh, with his previous club and it's like this is really nice you know they have like a nice concession stand inside they have a hockey arena that's indoors you know nice sitting area up above the fields and then we just have like the shit ass dome <laughs> so there's levels woodbury is above rosemount in in those levels yeah but original woodbury high school i don't think they have a dome but... i don't know if woodbury does but they probably just go to the, that health east facility yeah. <laughs> They're tearing down the front part of my school or my high school right now. I don't know where they're holding classes this year. Is that a bigger? I don't know if I've ever seen your your old high school. No, there's nothing to see there. But um, somebody sent out a link to them, basically the wrecking ball coming through and destroying the whole front half of the school. What happened to your statue? Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that still there? Probably still there somewhere in the rubble, as it should be. It's going to be remade. At some point, who's the model? Bigger, better, stronger. Yeah. yeah. Now, if anybody gets a statue there, it's Mr. Deppner. So, who? Uh, the Twins historian, the guy who runs the Twins Hall of Fame. Any relation to Stacy? No, unfortunately. <laughs> maybe, maybe a weird uncle. <laughs> then I don't care. <laughs> uncle. He did teach me how to drive. He was also a driving instructor. You could have just said uncle. You didn't have to say weird. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Who here watched the uh, preseason game? I mean, Pete was. I was out and about. Am I? Yeah. I've got a little bit of it. How many preseason games have you watched? 0. 0.0? Uh, yeah, I, I I probably half paid attention to the first half of the first game, and that's about it. Sure. Missed all of the first, uh, second half of the second, and then pretty much all was either radio or TV for this game here. So it was actually uh, interesting to watch, fun to watch. Had some peak moments here and there. Shall we say by second and third string players? I would say two sacks. 
Jaron Hall seemed to have command. I mean, granted, look who we're playing against, but uh, it, it, I don't know how much does three and zero in the preseason give you momentum um, with the guys that aren't even going to be. No one starting today um, is going to be playing on. Yeah, well, Denny used to believe in it, right? He yeah. loved it. <laughs> I think Dennis Green thing for sure. He was a big fan of going for no. But yeah, I'm looking at the names and I think Tristan Jackson scored another first quarter touchdown. That's three that's three preseason touchdowns. Both Jacksons were played active roles today. Yeah. Lucky Jackson also is there. <laughs> I didn't realize until last week that we we still had Miles Gaskin or we got him back. He I think they just signed him this week. Okay, because he played in the last game, so it, he was, but he was a, a okay. very recent. I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, he was, he was right before that game. Yeah, that they resigned him. So okay, he's been around for like two weeks. And then how do we? Mo Ibrahim. I just saw that we resigned him. He got a couple carries. Yeah, he was there 48 hours before he started. They played. Today. He was De- Detroit or somebody last year, right? Yeah. He was somewhere else. He was with Detroit. He literally played. Uh, I think got his first carry at minute 58 today. So <laughs> Mo. Mo made it into the game, though. He did. Yeah. And, Matt, and he could, I mean, I wonder if he might get that third third spot or if Gaskin, McBride. There's options. Matt Coral got, got a drive, it looks like. Must have gotten a series. Yeah, Matt did not look good today. No? Nope. Nope. Well, uh, it was 4-6 for, for 13 yards. That's not awesome. Coach was mic'd up for all the third quarter, and um, he kept commenting on how we're going to give Maddie some some shots here uh, mm-hmm. down the field, and we're going to try to really move the ball with him. Uh, not once did anything that they set for him really really work out. Anything that did seem to work out um, was augmented by other players. So they did get a scoring drive out of him, but uh, that wasn't Matt Corral. It was really, um, I would say, driving the bus on that. Well, my, my hope was that Jalen Hurts played the full game and that we just shut them down, their <laughs> first team down. But I don't think <laughs> I don't, that's I don't, exactly what happened. Yes. Looking, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. These are not first string guys. KP no. played the whole first half. It was the Kenny Pickett show. Yeah. And by show, you mean he looked terrible. <laughs> Couldn't tell if he had the gloves on or not. I, if he was, you know, Kenny. I mean, I saw, it, I saw it on the radio, so I, it still sounded pretty bad. Yeah. Is, is he a two glover? He was a two glover for a while. I, really? I, I, okay. You know, wasn't paying attention if he had him this time. But uh, he looked really awful. We should get some investigation or reporting in there to find out how many gloves he has these days. <laughs> Hard hitting journalism. Does he call Teddy Bridgewater to get advice? Good gloves. Well, it depends on the day of the week because you know he's coaching high school now. So, and so our first regular season game is the eighth. Huh? This is it for preseason. This is the third one. Yeah. This okay. the, uh... So as an aside. I just signed up last night for a, a, like a two month men's pickleball league with uh, with Shaf. So uh, Sunday nights, I'm probably gonna miss chunk good chunks of Sunday night games, uh, unfortunately. But for for what for pickleball? Yeah. <laughs> you Pickleball's know, a good time. I, I was gonna ask what you know because there of, were no other days pickleball happens. That's when they had it at this <laughs> at this place. Oh. Which place are you going to? Is it in, oh, North- it's in Rosemont? Uh, there's a place by your old place in Egan. It's called like Mr. Chips or something. Yeah, like yep, right by, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't got in there yet, but. That might be the winter time. We'll see. Look pretty swanky. I gotta get, I gotta develop the skills. Pay the bills. 15 pounds if I'm gonna get to that level. So. Does this mean we can officially ask you how's your dink? You can. You could have asked me that years ago, and I would have happily replied. Yeah. Do we get to come and watch? I don't know. Steph was talking about showing up with the kids. <laughs> I don't know if it's that type of uh, league. So I could see them bringing the popcorn. And uh, my hope is I just don't tear something because I'm not emotionally ready to to go through that level of pain and rehab. Or at least tear something that you don't really need. If I do tear something, yeah. what do what do I not need that I can tear? Do you want me to start a list? No, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> After seeing your shoulder stuff, I'm like, nope, that doesn't sound awesome. Mm, no. Knee stuff doesn't sound great. No. Maybe so, an ankle thing? I don't want to be rendered immobile, especially during the winter. Because I have oh, lig- ligaments or something? Uh, going immobile in the winter, I haven't been there before, back in college. Not awesome. That just leads to heavy sweating. So 
Not a fan. Is the place you play it like every other pickleball place? It's in X Kmart, uh, the abandoned Kmart that they refurbished. I don't know where that would be. The the, um, the Kmart that's like a Burlington or Aldi. Is the one down on Cedar there? Well, like the these pickleball places, right? That they started oh, up there. No, this one they actually built thing. like a little facility. It's right. It's on like almost like a church property. Hmm. Like Axel played soccer there when he was younger, and then they the fields that they he played soccer on they built like a workout place. So like he has a membership to this workout place, this little gym. So like Dex did a basketball league there a couple winters ago. So hmm. I haven't been inside, but yeah, it's it's more like a mini lifetime thing but without spending you know four figures a month for a membership <laughs> yeah. But, gotcha. yeah that would be a good uh friends outing pickleball dude i'm all about it we'll go to mr chips <laughs> i don't like this down right no i'm i'm busy that day sorry you would be doing whirly ball it's no whirly ball <laughs> that's what i was gonna say hey i'll do whirly ball <laughs> I'm going to White Zombie and Alice Cooper to hang out with guys, like the guys. I'm not excited for White Zombie and Alice Cooper. I just want to hang out with the guys. <laughs> That's I, always, I thought you said I was going to do all the white people things. <laughs> Pickleball, whirly ball. Whirly I'm ball. All the white people things. Uh, well, where I thought that was going. There's a heavy overlap between what I do and probably your stereotypical white dude, middle-aged <laughs> things. Because I'm a middle-aged, chunky white guy. So, yeah. I mean, spe- speaking of middle-aged, chunky white guys, uh, I was at the state fair with the family two days ago, and I was—I kept daring my youngest to uh, every time we saw a guy who even remotely resembled Tim Walls, I was daring her to just run up to him and say, "Tim Walls, I love you," and see <laughs> so if she can get other people nearby to believe that guy is Tim Walls. So it got, it got pretty fun. Oh no, she she never went through with it, but it got fun as the day progressed to find people who looked less and less like Tim Walls and dare her to uh, dare her to do it. <laughs> that's the, that's the new favorite state fair activity for anyone listening who has not yet gone. See, I, I I was I had a buddy that was going there for the first time. I'm like, you're like 35, 36. How is this your first time? And I told him the fun thing to do is like a scavenger hunt for like look for the person with the biggest cankles. Um, <laughs> Looking for people where the woman outweighs the husband by like a hundred pounds or more. Like this is these are my fun activities. The people watching. <laughs> Between that and the food, I don't know. It's amazing. It's not something I get to see every day. The full family on the rascal scooters. Is that what you're trying to go for? <laughs> yes. yes, that would be an amazing way to alive. At least a couple, right? At least a couple that have their own scooter and they have to be like under fifty. Yeah. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, but more white people stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, you gonna introduce this podcast? I mean, we started it kind of, but somebody, anybody? I did the last couple times. I think Schwartz has it. I gotta fix something. Guten Abend. Yeah, yes, today Peter. We're all casting. Coming off of Europe. Yeah, yeah, we're Euro casting. Yeah, but you're in France. <laughs> Not, not well, eight countries. There were eight countries involved in Germany. Was one of them. Oh, shit. I mean, and Germany so. did try to take over most of those countries at one point. They did. It's been a while. Within yes. within you know people's lifetime, it's not been that long. Yeah. yeah, people we know. They may have we're tried at. to do it twice. <laughs> I don't really know if I know any first timers that are around oh. anymore. But, it's, but you know, the third time is coming. Just wait. <laughs> Everything goes in threes. We're going dark here. Real dark. Real dark. Sorry, your German intro. Go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to VR. Yes, yes. Which, which, which one? Man, uh, can I, can I, can I go ahead and just give it the podcast number right away and the episode number, or what? What, sure. what, what should I do? Episode thirty-eight. Welcome to episode thirty-eight. No time for podcast. He's talking off camera again, or he's talking to himself. Are we muted? Yeah, he's muted himself. Joining us today are our hosts, old man Eric Kinsella, Hooray. Peter Martin. We're Jason Edgar. I'm Mike Schwartz. Today's topics. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where is Jeremy? Did, was did, was he invited? Uh, yeah. Okay, I gotta text him back. Reach out to him. <laughs> he doesn't always like to come to this party one, so it's fine. No, we gotta set up the next normal one and decide what we're gonna do next. I guess we had a lot of ideas, but this was coming up, so I thought we'd just get our uh, predictions on on tape. As they say. Nope, that's fair. As sad as they may be. Yeah. 
So how do people feel about uh, the long season that's coming ahead? Or what's everybody drinking first, I guess? Tall glass of ice water. Again, nice. getting into the and getting into the theme here for the Mormon wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but, I gotta be honest, that just sounds like a miserable experience. Having gone to a strict Baptist wedding years back and yeah. It's only two hours, so I'm really uh, yeah. just gonna say, you know what, we're gonna check the boxes and we're just gonna move on. Yeah. Are you, you having it at your palatial estate? No. Not hosting. Not hosting. It's going to be in Egan, actually. So I'll, I'll be make my way down to Egan this evening with the this probably the soberest Egan evening I've had in a long time. Yeah, you can always hold up, pop out to old man's at some point. Let me know if you do. Make an end out of it. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Uh, are you awake at eight <laughs> thirty? Me? You know I am. Oh, him? Him? Who me? The other? Yeah, the Egan guy there. Uh, no, obviously sleeping by them. <laughs> Sad. I'm uh, hosting Schwartz next weekend at the second Kinsella Estate in Cumberland. Oh, that's right. So he'll get plenty of me. He doesn't want two weekends of me. So <laughs> one's enough. One with water. Do I get to ride the jet ski alone, or is it only piggyback with you? Uh you can ride on the tube behind it. Oh, so I have to be pulled. I'm not allowed to actually sit on it. No, you, you're you're allowed because you're uh, grandfathered in. You don't have to get a license. Because you're, you're an old person. But if here's the deal though, I need video of Schwartz trying a fire extinguisher. Oh yeah. Fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Ooh. Okay. Come on, Schwartz. Can we can we okay. count on you to give it a whirl after probably twenty years? <laughs> you know, I went on a boat ride uh the fourth of July weekend. It was up at my parents' place for for the holiday. And this this boat cruise um we were on. I can't remember what lake we were on. It's a you know slowish cruisy boat, and these dudes came alongside the boat, jet skis, and though they were the biggest show offs I've ever seen in my life, they did all the stunts, they did all the cool shit, and it just inspired me to say, if I ever hope to do anything where I can get a jet ski tilted back to that degree, I'm gonna have some killer abs um, <laughs> after you know a couple sessions of that, because that clearly is what it takes to do those stunts on there. My God. Okay, it so long impressive. story short, you are gonna try the fire, the fire hydrant. Yeah. Can someone demonstrate it for me first before you know the hard crank, right? You just dip it down and oh, dip that down. one. Well, yeah, yeah. But you try to do it without skimming across the water at about forty miles an hour. What's the under on uh, my, you know, flying at least forty feet? I'm taking the over. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely taking the over. Last That's time I did, food. I tried anyway. It was like probably 15, 18 years, probably 15 years ago. And I'm like, well, I used to do this all the time 10 years before that, right? How hard could it be? No, 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 no. I did a yard sale <laughs> on the water, <laughs> just <laughs> things flying off and skimming. Yeah, I probably went a little too quick. You know, I realized, okay, maybe I shouldn't try that at 40 because it did not work. It was not successful. You realized your your abilities. Yeah. So I'd say if anything, if you're going to do it, which you should, because it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> Start at like 25 first. Maybe see how like 2025 20, goes. Okay. Deal. And work your way up versus starting here and cutting back. I'm going to have two relatively flingable um, individuals with me. Oh, do not put the kids in there. Okay. <laughs> your, your boys would go. A little solo mission. Yeah. They would get air if you try that with them on it. I might F up his homeowner's insurance. <laughs> yeah, we don't need any of that. Yeah. <laughs> My kids do enough of that. I'm good. Oh. Oh. Uh, by the way, I'm drinking a Diet Pepsi because I had a couple beers. So I might crack another one open, but I'm trying to, to back down a little. I saw Edgar had an interesting can. Is it CBD? Uh, yes, I'm going with the uh, the lime uh, cannabis cocktail today, alcohol-free, in honor of a uh, Mormon wedding taking place in Egan. <laughs> so, I, I still haven't had a cannabis one, but I still have this from that the thing at Old Man's. So I might maybe I'll crack this open, the double fly high. Nice. I, I would like recommend it. You might want to pop that in the fridge too. It's it's in the fridge. Oh, I forgot you got a fridge under your desk. Fancy yeah. man. Well, it's for those hard days of work. I work. <laughs> why, why are you judging? No, you've omitted on the podcast before. I'm just yeah. commentary. That was all. I was there was no judgment. I was just saying. <laughs> That's exactly what you should do. I'm a grinder. <laughs> and a bumper. And a bumper. But yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to try that out at some point and see if I how much it hits me, if I feel it. I'm having yeah. lift bridge juice Z, which you can't see because, you know. Ugh. Sweet. Pretty good. 
Yeah, there's a Godzilla on it, and he's you know laying waste to the lift bridge in Stillwater. I mean, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, you got to get all those people that are just you know walking across now because they don't use it for real traffic anymore. So, Edgar, are those your drink of choice now? The CBD things. Um, I, I appreciate the lack of a hangover. The last time, I think it was probably the last time I saw uh, you at that uh, that bar in St. Paul was actually four mm-hmm. weeks ago. I made the mistake of ordering a third drink, and the next day was pretty rough. So I, I realized I got to limit myself to two alcoholic drinks, or I have to drink uh, these uh, cannabis things to avoid the hangover. Interesting. Has anybody played trivia since? Won anything? No. no. Haven't no. been invited. I mean, there's. Really you can actually just sign up yourself. That's like, <laughs> I, I'm not exactly a ringer. I, if it's not with the Yeggers or TD, it's probably not worthwhile. I'm just wasting time. Schwartz is right there. You're acting like Schwartz doesn't know trivia. Schwartz, do you know modern music, like music of the last 20 years? If so, mm-hmm. you're invited. He would have. He would have yeah. been. He would have yeah. helped with that yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. There's a whole That's category like- where we got screwed because Pete said, "Hold on, I got this." And then didn't have this. And then it was all music from like the last eight years. Yeah. And we got one, we got like one song or something. We had you guys zero do points. realize that there's a group called One Republic and almost everyone who was in One Republic, you know, sold lots of records in their solo career um, in the last five years. Were you in One Republic? Is that why you bring that up? That, I, I'm just saying there, you know. <laughs> If if a male singer's name is thrown out there and music's been made in the last five years, it probably was in One Republic at one time. Gotcha. So he's invited, but Pete's not invited. Yeah, Pete's been oh, excommunicated. Well, you're too busy playing pickleball now. <laughs> Got to practice. You can't just go to a game night. I mean, it's great that you know all the sports questions, but the rest of us are pretty good with sports. We got sports covered. You got to bring something else to the table. Music be- before religions, the- world religions. <laughs> yeah. 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 We just proved. World is there if there's a ham or no ham category at the next bar trivia? I'll text you quick. Lots <laughs> of <laughs> meat. <laughs> what which meat. meat do they hate? <laughs> Even cuts of meat. I'm like, I don't know, man. I just eat meat if they put it in front of me. <laughs> I like winners. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Should we have a sports name podcast? Like a name for these episodes? I thought or Sportify was pretty sports. good. What's that? Sportify was pretty good. Yeah, no, that one just popped in my head. But I mean, I'm in. I'm uh, inclined to go with something like "There's always next year" because that's just literally the, across all Minnesota sports a common mantra. But it's also the name of like half my fantasy teams. So and your fantasies, there's always next year because it can get better, right? You could go to a Mormon wedding in Egan. Mm-hmm. What's he okay. always dreamed of? Could it just be how? Question mark dot dot dot. Why? Question mark dot dot dot. Again. <laughs> I mean, fitting with the you know, there's always next year oh. sort of. Uh, Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> or you know, some some Dennis Green quote like taking the high road. <laughs> we we let them off the hook. Throw on their asses. <laughs> Force disappointment. Throw them. <laughs> mm. Oh, that guy was a quote machine, man. Mm-hmm. How about just the fight the the friggin' Schnelker podcast? For, throw go back in time a little more. It's not, it's not his fault though. It was well, not, we can debate that. It was not Schnelker's fault. Fuck I love that guy Anderson, but Anderson. He, he fucked it up. I just gotta say it. He fucked it up. It was it was not Schnelker's fault. All right. So, so is this the part we did, what we're here for? Yeah. Is this the part we have to talk about Sam Darnold for forty minutes? Because I don't okay. think I'm up for that. I don't think he was on the field for 40 minutes, so should we talk about him for that long? Oh, I thought this was a season preview, because if we have to talk about the preseason games, then I'm really not up for that. <laughs> no, no one wants to hear us break down the preseason. So, on that note, uh, we had four different starting quarterbacks last season. Yep. Four. Oh, that math checks out. Which 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 was your favorite? <laughs> Is Are they still on the team? You know, when you look at where Kurt was through his eight games? Mm-hmm. Statistically, Kirk would have had one of his best seasons in his career if he oh, would have stayed on track. He was, he would, I think he would have been the MVP, um, leader, like co co leader, whatever front runner team MVP had he played all 16, 17 games. No, I just want to go on record here and say about two years ago, I made a similar, um, prognostication and I was laughed out of the room. So for you to say that now, I, it, it, that hurts. That really hurts. Is it is it on tape somewhere that we could go back to the tape? No, I don't know why you're I lying. Mean, 
It was it was doing. I think it was doing the fantasy draft two years ago. I I, I made you know a Kirk Cousins future MVP comment, and uh, and and it was uh, derided. And now you're yeah, saying, oh, he would have won MVP last year if he stayed healthy. Sure, yeah. He did that trick me, and he didn't. Okay. Didn't make it. But yeah, he was on. He was on the pace, man. He would have. I think he would have won. But that's and with not, that, no. And no, no. If, he, if he had no stayed healthy and had an MVP season, he probably could have suckered some team into giving him fifty million a year guaranteed. But you know, now he's hurting on. I don't even know what he got. Oh yeah, that's right. He got fifty million guaranteed from someone. <laughs> it was only forty-five, right? Wasn't it four one eight? And that team drafted a quarterback in the oh, first round. Yeah. So there. Ah. Figure that one out. Oh, statistically, man. statistically, our quarterbacks last season, we managed to be fourth in attempts. We managed to be fifth in passing. We threw the fourth most touchdowns, but unfortunately, we uh, ranked 29th in our quarterback interceptions. So, did you see the running backs we had? Though? Right. Well, and yeah. I think we all knew that last season would go that way, right? To some degree, we we were forced to, yeah. provided garbage time or not, we were going to have to pass the crap on the ball. And that includes the Oakland game, the three-zero game. <laughs> yes, three Amazing. donuts. Mm-hmm. That was. I honestly, God, I don't know that I've had less fun watching a game than that game. I uh, I just wanted to claw my eyes out and commit seppuku. <laughs> it was brutal. So I, uh, I, you know, do I wish we had Sam Darnold? No. Do I wish McCarthy was healthy for this year? Yes. Did I put a lot of stakes in them trying to compete this year? No, I figure this will be a rebuild year no matter what. Um, and I'm I was willing to let the chips just fall where they may and take that massive amount of cap space that we have running into the 2025 season and you know, banking more on that. But I was really hoping McCarthy would have been healthy for this year to to give him a shot. But what do you so- think of some of the other offseason moves? Like Hunter leaving hurt, obviously. Um, but we tried to Solidify that in the draft and free agency. Even though Aaron Jones is not 24-year-old Aaron Jones, it's easy to say that we instantly improved our running game by picking up Aaron Jones. Mm-hmm. 29-year-old Aaron Jones. Somebody that and can I'll, also catch the I'll, ball in the backfield? Also catch the ball. And yeah. you go back to last season, and again, that running game, right? So we ranked 30th, <laughs> maybe 31st in rushing touchdowns. How many rushing touchdowns did we have last season? Yes. Oh, eight? I don't know. Ooh, you were close. I'm Unfortunately, guessing. it's less. Seven so. and a half. <laughs> and, and half of them were probably by Josh Dobbs. Um, I hit three. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was... Ty Chandler had three. And then the last one, Cam Akers with one. Our our go-to, our horse last year, had zero. Yeah. Madison was... I mean, as much as our offensive line struggled, probably blocking in the red zone. <laughs> Madison was some of that problem. I had such high hopes that he would come in and actually do decent, not be as good as Cook, but do decent. But man, he shit the bed. He just shit the bed last year. But I mean, in defense of the coaching staff too, and the lack of a running game, you're putting high draft picks and big money into Cousins and Jefferson and uh, Addison and Hawkinson. Why the hell would you run the ball? What's the point of, of the guy who makes a half million dollars starting at running back? you don't want him to carry your offense. It would, yeah. Yes, it would be nice to be able to pick up a third and one every once in a while, but I have no problem with them being dead last and rushing if they're if they have the passing oh, game. Yeah, that's on, good. That's, good. Right? Like there's it's gotta be trend. A, there's gotta be a level of balance. I, again, I'm not a, a football, you know, a great mind, but if they know you're throwing most of the time, you're gonna have troubles throwing the ball. But that's no, exactly no. what happened last year, and they didn't have trouble throwing the ball. They were fourth in the league in uh, passing without also, for half the year. But that's because of volume. They also led the league and or were top near the near the top of the league in interceptions because they were playing the pass. Would well, you like to know? Pass. Would you like to know we ranked number one in last season? Fan Fumbles around. out of the end zone. Punting coverage. Punting coverage. Percentage of drives ending in an offensive turnover. <laughs> But a lot of that was fumbles too. It wasn't all quarterback. It wasn't all interceptions. We were 29th in interceptions, fumbles. We were definitely in the bottom as well. But nearly one in five of our offensive drives ended in an offensive turnover. That's one out of every five. Ridiculous. 18, it was like 18 and a half percent. 
That's but again, so again, I'll be the asshole and I'll say all the previous years we were telling Kirk Cousins to be more aggressive, even if it's, that means his interception numbers go up. So he did what we wanted him to. And then we but got stuck with shitty backups the after he got hurt, who, of course, are going to throw interceptions because they're shitty how, backups. How many of these were after Kirk, though? I've, oh, oh I like that. All Nick Mullins and all pass or not. But we had bad fumbles in those first half, right? Because we had those games we lost. And like the won. first three or four games, there was a lot of turnovers. Yeah, and it wasn't just like we fumbled. You know? We were averaging like two and a half That's fumbles true. a game. Those Dumb first, fumbles. When we went one games. Three, yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was ugly, yeah. Kirk was only <laughs> responsible for five of the 19. Those interceptions. Gotcha. And he, but he was also how many pass? I mean, how many touchdown passes did he have? I mean, he was on pace for like a forty yeah. ten season or something. He was, he was 40. damn near almost twenty. He almost yeah. Yep. So if our coaching staff can can mold Sam Darnold into being something approximating Kirk Cousins, then you, what? We're Super Bowl unbound. I think that's what I'm hearing. I'll just <laughs> get the tickets now. <laughs> Redhead, Redhead and Kirk Cousins. I think refund airline ticket. Where is the Super Bowl this year? Anyone know? Is it just Miami every year now? That I would also. Great. Can we add in the the necessary month factor that would need to be in play, given our situation at tight end? We got to have Johnny step up. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. gonna have Hawkinson back for probably what eight six. I, I think six we, eight weeks pretty easily, and he's not gonna be playing probably comfortably being his normal self for probably another month after that, right? You'd be lucky to get a half a season out of T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah. And if Addison gets suspended at the start of the year, then it's going to be yeah a lot of two tight, two tight end sets, a lot of short passes for the first handful of games. So Munt and Oliver will both uh, get plenty of field time. And Nikhil Harry, our new newly converted tight end. Never we did get the guy from Green Bay, but then he got, immediately got hurt. Mm. Tanya? Yeah. Tanya. He was on the roster. Uh, the Super Bowl is in New Orleans this year. New Orleans. I'm in. Sure. Let's just do it. I, I wonder how that's going to work if uh, drive down 35 and get there eventually, right? Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's going to be a problem with them keeping, if they keep moving the season back and back. If we have a New Orleans Super Bowl the same week as Mardi Gras, that might just be uh, the end of uh, civilization. Hopefully, that's, those two things don't butt up against each other. <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, the election goes without any hitches and we don't have a civil war going on at the same time. Also, the <laughs> Vatican's got to play a role in that, too. So. Did the Vatican reschedule Easter for the Super Bowl? <laughs> we our Please. Vatican astronomer did some calculations. Uh, yeah, we're gonna this year. It's actually gonna be in May. So your Super Bowl, you're all set. You go ahead. Easter is May in New Orleans, guys. Might as well just make a pilgrimage. <laughs> well, that's right. We'll have a 20 game season coming up soon, and yeah, it'll, it'll be March late. Super Bowl. Yeah, playing into playing that late, just dumb. March Madness will start a week later. You know, on the subject of uh, the election hastening a uh, civil war, I uh, was looking at the Timberwolves <laughs> schedule when it came out a couple <laughs> last week or the week before. They're playing uh, in D.C. against the Wizards on January 13th. So that's the week Ooh. after the vote certification, the week before inauguration. It's like, I would love to go because I love D.C. And obviously I have cheap tickets at, at the Wizards Arena. But I don't know, man, the city might be on fire then. I don't want to plan ahead. That might you, be might have to go, you might have to go and save Nas. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Maybe they'll reschedule that game, like move it to Baltimore or something, just in case. Much better, because that's not a yeah, sure. shithole. Any, totally city, any city with an arena that's in the area. Yeah. Totally. The good really thing Rudy has French citizenship. He can get out. He can get out of here easily. Okay? <laughs> Rudy will hole up in the embassy while the uh, while the troopers are marching up and down the street. He'll be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy's just going to surrender right away. Come on, guys. You call Rudy a bitch? <laughs> no, I'm saying he's French. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> More uh, World War One, World War Two jokes, right? I did well, buy an old white guy podcast. What else would you do? I did buy a ten game package for the T, t- Wolves, by the way, just two seats. So, if y'all anybody wants in for a game, let me know. Where are the seats? They're lower deck in the corner. Okay. Yeah, when I was looking at that Wolves Wizards game, it was uh, the seat like adjacent to the Wolves bench, front row. So right by the court, so you you know you're six feet away from the bench. It was only like one thirty. It's like holy shit, I got to go to Washington. Nobody's buying tickets there apparently. That's way, that's gonna be a bad team. That's yeah. way cheaper than the Wolves. Well, they got that yeah. sweet the guy from France with the first pick, second pick. Did they get yeah. Sar or the other guy? I'm sorry. No, Atlanta. Pick. Atlanta had the first pick. The guy from well, Washington got. He's a project. I don't he's also a French guy, right? The French guys go one two. Wow. Yeah, they went one two. But I don't think they over they 
they did super well in the pre you know, in the summer league. Let's just say it's a bad year to have the first pick in the draft. <laughs> but next next year will be a great year for them to have mm-hmm. a first pick. Next year, if you go to that game, is that going to be if you're low enough and it's the I don't know if it's the same arena that the Bullets once played in? Remember the guy who used to heckle Robin something? Robin? Robin something. He was a lawyer guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a lawyer dude. Yeah, Robin something. I forget what his last name was. Be amazing if that dude was somehow still alive. I I doubt it. Yeah, I think he's gone. You would have seen him on TV at some point in the last few years if he was still going to games. Uh, That was down. Yeah, that he was just riding those guys. And then uh, the the cowboy dude is still with the Clippers, I think. I think that guy's still there. You know, the gold, he looks like luggage. Just, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that Bailey Crystal? Is that who you're talking about? Because he was a Clippers fan. <laughs> you know, he was just, he just played a cowboy in a movie. He wasn't really a cowboy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mind blown. Go ahead. Push me. <laughs> I know the scene. I know the scene you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> scoop of vanilla, scoop of chocolate. <laughs> How many one arm push ups could you do right now, Peter? Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. So tw- but it probably starts with zero. But yeah, sorry. Go back to, to Vikings. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I didn't have great expectations and I was okay with that. And McCarthy going down hurt my expectations because I thought he might get a few starts. But I'm okay if they just ride with Darnold and he doesn't completely just kill them every game. I would also be okay, and I think we texted about this, if Mullins just goes out there and slings a rock and throws up a 30-30 season and with 4,200 yards, like, fuck it, just sling the rock, baby, and there's games you're going to win for us, and there's definitely games you're going to lose for us because you're an idiot with the ball. (laughs) But, so he's going to kick it like the late 90s. Well, I mean, how often do you see the, 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 the backups come in and, and they can't literally, they literally can't move the ball, right? No. And this guy, he will try to move the ball. And that's way more interesting than trying to get 150 yards passing and just grind it on the ground, whatever. Just sling that rock, baby, and, and let's see what happens. So if, if Darnold can't be competent, I have hopes that Mullins will at least make games interesting. I don't anticipate winning a lot. I don't think we're going to win the division or anything crazy. I think, if anything, we're going to be battling for third with the Bears. Well, with the, way it, with the way it's shaping up, wouldn't you just ride Darnold all year? Because there's no reason to... Why would why would Mullins go in at this point? If I think Donald's it's, trash, right? That's if Darnold is that. complete trash, you can't you can't play him, right? Like, if, he's, if he can't move the ball, if he's like your you know, stereotypical Jets quarterback from the, the aughts. Like, no, at least make it interesting for the fans, right? Because you can't alienate the fans. That's the one thing, what I saw in Carolina, he was better than what Mullins for that one year. Yeah, and maybe he is. I don't I don't know, right? Like, he could be. I'm just saying if he, if he totally tanks and literally goes like 5 for 20, you know, 7 for 20, 110 yards, two interceptions, it's like, fuck sure. it get Mullins in there, let him he might throw as many interceptions, but at least he'll get 250, 250 yards and, and he'll throw an in interception for 20 yards versus 40 yards? 100%, yeah. yeah. So, okay, I have a question. Play. Yeah. Does Jones hit a 1,000 this year, rushing? Depends on com- combined play. rushing and passing, I think he'll be over a 1,000, but I think they Oh, yeah, a combined. Short, a lot of short passes to him, less out of the backfield. I mean, I just there don't think... be no reason why he doesn't have 50 catches this year. Jones, yeah. Um, yeah, it's his health. Like he, that's been his biggest thing the last four or five years, right? Is can he can he play thirteen, fourteen games? And is KOC committed to the run for a thousand yards? Like, is there any chance? Like, he's shown no inkling in preseason, four season to doing that so far. I think with this, the way the lineup is set up, I think he's probably more inclined to try to 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 keep it going. To keep balance versus just slinging it. Because if you have Darnold, you look at Kirk. Kirk was a what thirty-five attempt a game quarterback. Is Sam Darnold going to have thirty-five attempts in a game? Like, yeah. how regularly is that going to happen for him? Yeah, at least I at the start of the season, right? Um, I don't. I don't think you will. <laughs> Seems hard. I'll, to I'll just throw my hot take and say I think in the NFL, coaching matters more than any other sport, and I think Darnold's never had a 
coach, offensive coach or quarterback coach or head coach who's been worth a damn. So I think he actually could be really good this year. Like people are still appraising Geno Smith for his breakout season two years ago. Mm -hmm. I think Darnold's going to, could be better than that. And it wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Um, I kind of hope that he's not because I kind of hope the Vikings bottom out with like four or five wins and get a high draft pick. But I could see them easily going like eight or nine wins and just missing the playoffs if Darnold stays healthy. Yeah. yeah. Someone on the radio was saying that there's only one coach that had any connection to Darnold that's still in the league at this point. Like all the other ones are out of the league. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I totally expect with, with O'Connell, like he will improve from the best he's done before. I think that's his his floor, right? Is his best previous season. Yeah. Better tools around him. You know, assuming Addison doesn't get suspended, assuming we get Hawkinson back eventually, assuming the offensive line isn't total shit, which it shouldn't be. We got at least a couple guys that are decent. So I mean the the biggest thing they have going against them is the schedule because after the Giants week one, they could probably lose like their next seven games, seven or eight games. So then it's a question of if you're sitting at one and seven, you know, do you stick with Darnold or do you just make a change for the sake of making a change? That's what I was thinking too, is like, how far do you get your dauber down that you're going to say like, yeah, he's got 35 attempts a game and he's throwing, he's had a few 300 yard passing games and he's not necessarily uh, turning the ball over, but he's not winning. Oh, so sorry. what does that mean for the team? I mean, if they're all like three-point losses because the defense is giving up big drives in the fourth quarter, then I think you can't blame the offense for that. It's when you stick with them. But yeah, if it's if it's turnovers, stupid turnovers that are costing them games, I guess you have to do something. I just don't know how going to Nick Mullins is going to reduce your stupid turnovers. Right? Well, it won't. It won't. It's just more exciting. Hundred <laughs> percent. He will turn but, the ball over. But, realist, but realistically, are any of us going to be spending as much time watching the Vikings this year as we have in the past years? I mean, haven't you already picked out your new Sunday fall hobby because this team is not yeah, going to watch? Yeah, night games. I'm missing probably chunks of night games. The, the Vikings do not play a single Sunday night game this season, so that's not yeah. going to work for you. Damn it, that's fair. They have yeah. a lot of noon games, and that's always kind of a telltale right there. I mean, and they, they might get cool. flexed into some Sunday night games, guys. Yeah. They, they'll get might. flexed would, if they're they'll good enough. Sure. In that damn thing. Not with that team. They, uh, I'm flexing right now. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Wait. The, uh, Lions game, game 17, it says TBD. Yeah. <laughs> so if that's if that's, that gets flexed to Sunday night, then you know the Vikings are really well and you're like doing well and you want to watch the game. But if they're you know four and thirteen, that's not. Yeah, I'll always watch them, right? I I, uh, I mean, if it starts off and they throw a two quick pick sixes, yeah, I'll probably turn it off after a bit because you know I'm forty seven and I have other shit I would rather do than watch a team just get destroyed. You'd be begging Steph to go to the Apple Orchard every Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'll. I'll, 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 I'll is assuming you know calendar wise, I'm good. I'll, I'll I'll at least start with the plan to watch them and take it from there. Because yeah, I mean, I don't expect anything from the the people that well, I, you didn't support them when they sucked. Well, no, because I got other shit going on. I'm not going to watch a team just get you know anally raped every week. That's not fun. <laughs> you can do that for free online. He, he did that. He did. He did that for thirty years with Timberwolves. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, thirty five. Let's be fair. Huh. I was so, no. I was being generous. Yeah, I get some, there's other things I want to do with my time than watch a team shit the bed. Sorry. Like, I don't think that doesn't make me a good fan. I think it just makes me have somebody that has priorities. <laughs> some level. Speaking of the schedule, yeah. on that Is note, it? there are no cold weather games this year. Zero. Big fat zero. If you don't that call always it. Go outdoor. Yeah, right. Uh, right. Like well, awful, see, Seattle outdoor. in December, that could get a little dicey, but it won't be below zero or below freezing. Yeah. Bears on November 24th, right before Thanksgiving. That's not going to be a problem unless there's a major snowstorm or something stupid like that were to happen. But mm -hmm. everything is either indoors or is, you know, not Green Bay, basically. And we, so they could get, that's a perfect yeah. excuse to get Tom Brady out of retirement then. You start like, you start like one and three, one and four. Darnold's not doing it. You call Brady, you say, hey, you're playing indoors in warm weather the rest of the season. Just throwing it out there. Hot take. Hot take. We have the cap room. If it, if it actually happens, we got this. We got this recorded. I would have been about that. Yeah, when when Cousins went down, like had he been like warming up last year? Like, sure, let's just ride it. Because I, I saw something on Twitter about like 
tell me you didn't think the Vikings had a chance to get to the Super Bowl. Like when it was the game against Green Bay, the game he got hurt, right? And he just dropped a dime, touchdown. It's like, I felt so good about the potential, even though they're what, three and four or whatever at that time. Like having watched them, I felt so good that they could make waves. And then he got hurt. <laughs> But I would know they did follow that with what winning four out of five. Yeah, yeah. without him. Without him. Oh, I'd be. Oh, if, I think it was. I don't. They they didn't win four games after he got down. I think they they got three more wins and that was it. So well, they won the first two after the injury, but then they started losing. And is it true that they they're not favored in a single game? That's true. And and except I guess because the Giants are at home week one, but the Giants are terrible. That's going to be their best chance for okay. a win. Again, Daniel jo- Daniel Jones better send fucking thank you cards to O'Connell every year near the holidays. <laughs> but who was the free agent that was available that some of us texted about? Joe Flacco that was available at the time that had yeah. a good run there at the end. Could have been He's the guy. Good. Isn't he older than you? He's a rookie. Really close. He's a rookie in 08, I think. You guys have the same beard. Oh, yeah. Same number of children probably, too. Eight? Eight. <laughs> I guess the one big thing working against the Vikings week one is that that's Darnold back in New York where he might uh, have some flashbacks or something. But if we can get through that, he'll be okay. The grudge match rematch against the Jets, but that's in London, so that shouldn't be a problem. We own the Niners. Yeah. (laughs) Except in the postseason. Well, week two, it's only week two, so uh, Ayuk probably won't be playing. Uh, uh, McCaffrey will probably be hurt in his week one game. Can I just say, totally diverging to fantasy football, Wide receivers are pretty scary this year with Ayuk and CD Lamb and Jamar Chase all having sort of contract issues. I don't think I have to worry about CD. The other two are problems. Yeah. I'll let you guys draft them. Even up. with them trying to figure out that the Dak situation, is CD going to get exactly what he wants? And the fact that he turned on more money than Jefferson got, right? I think. I think he did. That's what was reported, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. All right, cool. Like At that point, if I'm Jerry Jones, I'm like, just... All right, not everybody can make the max money. We offered you literally the biggest contract for a wide receiver, and you still said no, and you're not materially better than every other receiver. This isn't Jerry Rice in his prime. You have guys that are in your caliber making less. Well, I think, too, he's he's probably a little pissed off that they waited so long to offer him that amount of money. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's why we're trying to stick it to him, yeah. The Vikings were stupid waiting as long as they did. Like, they probably could have gotten JJ for cheaper had they done it. They would have gotten him for cheaper had they done it before, right? Yep. Yeah, you never want to be the last guy to sign your your own free agent. No. Just doesn't work out well. Sorry. Not great. Not great. Not great. But drafts are coming up soon, so it's on top, it's top of mind. Sure. Can we say, though, that we made an improvement on defense versus last year? That we've actually worked to improve the defense. Defensive backfield, probably not the best place to start. But if you look in the interior and linebacker core, well, they couldn't yeah. get much worse on the de- on the defensive line. So and anyone who they added should be an improvement. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, the, I think yeah, like you said, losing the, Hunter, right? Even losing Hunter. Yeah, but I'd rather I loved Daniel, right? I was I, you know big Daniel guy, but for the money he got, it's and where this team is at. With the competitive wise, like it, I don't think it made sense to pay the 29 year old guy max money for his position when we're not there yet. Versus you're a Texans and you feel like you're on the brink of something. Yeah, big I mean, Texans get the leadership. Totally makes sense, right? Okay, we're putting our chips in. They got digs, right? It makes sense. Like we, they have to do it while Stroud's on his rookie contract. Once Stroud is not on his rookie contract, they're fucked. They're yeah. going to have to blow it up. And Nico Collins is on a rookie contract and tanked up, <laughs> right? Yeah. They're literally their their best offensive players are on rookie contracts, so hundred percent makes sense that that's they're they're just putting their chips in because there is no dynasties outside of the Patriots in football, and that was because Brady would take under market. That was it. Haven't the Chiefs won three of the last five or whatever it's been? Well, okay, yeah, I guess the Chiefs. And I'm sure they'll they'll be favored to win again they, this year. I'm sure they have arguably the the best quarterback of all time, maybe second best if you want to put Brady first, which I totally get. So that's different too. Like they cycle all guys around them. Offensive line is totally different from two years ago, but nobody else has that that guy. So yeah, I think that's fair. I, I'd put the Chiefs there too. Without a top ten receiver. Yeah, they they traded their top receiver. Their yeah, but they they also have a couple of guys that could be pretty pretty solid. But 
nobody would be as good if they weren't with the Chiefs <laughs> from a receiver perspective. So, but fantasy wise, drafting any of those Chiefs early? Oh, draft, it's a gamble, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to hope you're the, you get the right one because <laughs> if you do, you'll be you'll be getting some value in the gold. No, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I'm, I was fine that we didn't go all in on somebody. I think like I said there. I think Quesi's. I don't. I'm still mixed on his drafting capabilities. What? How many picks do we have left from three years ago? Two years ago, I mean. Not very many. We don't have them, right? Like just from two years ago, we <laughs> they already punted. We had a guy die from this draft. That's not a great start. Um, and we, you know, it's pulled all the picks into Dallas Turner, which I'm cool with, and trading up for McCarthy, which I was cool with. But I think it makes sense. Let's just. McCarthy's on a cheap contract for four more years after this and wait next year, load up if you think he's the guy and do what the, the Texans are doing. You know, so don't get, do what the Rams did six years ago. Yeah, hundred percent. Totally worth it. Right. <laughs> what guy wouldn't sell his soul for a Super Bowl from here? Even a means like tanking like the Rams did, right? How bad were the Rams the year after the Super Bowl? They're awful, but totally worth it. Are you gonna be an AFC uh Texans fan this year since they have Daniel and Steph, the, it, they'll it certainly become watchable. Yeah, they'll be watchable. More than that, I, I've struggled outside of like the uh, Chiefs games, watching a lot of AFC football, maybe like the Bills. Yeah, but it's becoming more watchable. And watching Rodgers, assuming he doesn't get hurt on the third third play of the <laughs> first game, you know, Jets might actually be watchable. I kind of want it to happen. That would be hilarious if he did it again. Like first quarter, first game, goes down with a major injury. Who wouldn't I- find that humorous? I would. Even Jets fans would be laughing at that. Do mm-hmm. um, you think you'd blame it on the ayahuasca? <laughs> <laughs> no? All right. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd be curious to see. I, I forget how much cap room we have going into 2025, but it's like 60 plus million after extending um, Derisa, right? And JJ. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Right? I think we extended, we extended Derisa too, right? Yep. So, yeah, I mean, that's. I don't know. I think it's a good a good spot to be, and I wish we had a few more draft picks next year. But well, you know, Kirk will probably get you know one season in Atlanta, so he can come back. Right. <laughs> they're going. Yeah, they're going to money. Hey! Pick last year. There's yeah. your cap, baby. <laughs> and they're kind of the inverse. All their talent is still in their fr- the big you know the big offensive talents on their first contract. Yeah. But that'll be changing between Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Bijan. All of a sudden, those guys, like a year or two, are going to all want money. So, what did Penix get? Did he get a four or five year? I'm sure he did, right? He's a first round pick, so it's five years. Like, yeah. Five years. Standard. Yeah. yeah, with an extra year if they want to resign him. So, the uh, the 2026 Super Bowl that you think the Vikings all will have a real shot at, that's going to be in Santa Clara, just for future reference. 2027 in LA. You guys can stay here in my Palo Alto, Alto place. <laughs> <laughs> You're I mean, Pete already, Pete and I already started, uh, stayed at a pretty swank hotel. It was, it was eco friendly, so yeah, it was very know. out of our comfort zone. Yeah, you're in the heart of Silicon Valley, right? I mean, so, who were the coaches that were in the lobby that day? Do you remember what we were right before the game we went? To? You, you, you saw them all, they're all behind me. Oh, that's I right, they're all behind you. Jeff Garcia was there, Jeff Garcia was there. We did not see his wife slash girlfriend, um, the porn star, Man. um. I think she was just a model. Uh, it was the Patri- the old Patriots wide receiver. What's his name? He was there. Edelman? Yeah, Edelman was. Because okay. he was a wide receiver's coach. Or so Welker. That, that was Welker, I think. Yeah. I think that's it was yeah, Mr. Blue know. Eyes. Yeah, it was Welker. And then there was. What else? Does he have blue eyes? I don't know. It's amazing to me that you could actually pick Wes Wel- Welker out of a crowd. I would have well, I thought it was. Like. I thought it was Lynch for a second. They kind of got a similarly shaped Walk face. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, why is the GM staying in a weird little hotel? This seems weird. <laughs> With uh, the people. Then we had to like start looking at the uh, coaches list because we were having a hard time placing who it was. So just, no, I won't say that. No, cut this out. Go on. <laughs> All right, I'll edit it. Go for it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Go on. It's a, it's this a, this is the prediction segment. Do you want to? No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to make a prediction. I was going to yeah. comment on something you said that probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't be great. So go on. Uh, now, now you develop shenanigans. <laughs> now you develop. Is it Jeff Garcia related? I know. You, th- I know it's not a visual enough. medium, but I'm waving my arms, waving <laughs> waving them off. Oh man, my favorite Jeff Garcia moment was uh, in December of 2005. 
You know, you know what game I'm talking oh, about. The Detroit game. The Detroit game. Oh yeah. Once Jeffy threw that interception to end the game, and there was a chance that the Lions could have done it to us. Yeah. And all the Lions fans looking at us and going, "See, told you." <laughs> And man, those guys have become really arrogant, right? Is it just me or the Lions fans? Have they turned an ugly tide? Like social media and whatnot, it's like they became really arrogant for a team that's literally done nothing before this past season for the previous 50 years. They've man, earned it. Give them, give them a break. They've earned, earned the right to be an asshole They've earned nothing. They earned the uh, New England Patriots pass on their asshole behavior. They just became insufferable out of nowhere. Pete also doesn't think they're very good. If you lived in Michigan, you know why. To win the division. I think they're okay. I just don't think they're heads and shoulders above it, you know, the rest of the that's just, that's just the, the anti goth bias shining through. Nobody <laughs> believes in goth. Hey, I'm pro I'm, I'm pro goth. Not goth. Goth. Oh goth. We're I was talking like, about, well, I don't know if goth, goth comes into play, but sure. I'm all, I'm all right with goths. Okay. He likes fish that stockings. Yeah. Goth like no. alter, alternate chick goth. Yeah, I'm all about goths and trees. So, <laughs> old man knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm not a big goth guy. I don't know. He just he he had one good year before last year, and then he stinks. So is it him? Is it the system? Is it the stinky system? Uh, the uh, although the Lions do have a lot of talent on their team, so they'll be they'll be competing, and I'd be okay if they they win the division over the Packers. So to stave that off for one more year, because then they're just the Packers are going to dominate. Will they go? I don't know. Just saying, keep it, keep it, keep it away for one more year at least. I'm just glad we didn't have to have the Jordan Love uh, decision making. Remember how yeah. happy we were when we thought he was bad the first half of the season? Oh my gosh, I was ecstatic. <laughs> I recall that. I we have that recorded. We could talk. We could play that right now. No, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. I think we got ahead of ourselves. Back yeah, to the cool. highest paid player in the NFL as of today. Yeah. Four year, two hundred twenty million dollar extension. Eight games. Eight games made you the highest paid player. Literally, yeah, right. Because the first eight, he was like, meh. And then those last eight, he had like twenty five touchdowns to two interceptions or some shit like that. It's like, oh, that's not great. <laughs> Maybe the money will go to his head and he'll fuck up somehow. And- in the rest of his career will suck and the Packers will be on the hook for it and that would uh, all work out for us. This is like a 50-50 chance. He could go full Willie Beeman or, you know, maybe not. I mean, my hope is losing to uh, DeVito. Losing to DeVito and he still gets paid all that money. Yeah. Will he uh, ever become a retread Viking quarterback? That's what my question. Oh, don't worry. We'll have, we'll have Jordan Love jerseys in 2040. <laughs> if you don't... If you don't think that, you're not paying attention. Is there a chance that A. Raj and Jordan Love are on the same Vikings team? No. Well, not. Rogers would be the owner. Yeah. And then he would. He, well, he's uh, clearly he's bought the team. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Crypto's going to take off any day now, and he's the only one dumb enough to yeah. still have his money in crypto. So it'll, it'll work out great for him. He'll be buying teams everywhere. Will there be two A. Rod owners in this market? Hey, that, that those decisions haven't come down the line yet. Yeah, yeah there's still a chance that he gets hosed. He might get back with J. Lo, too. Yes. <laughs> You never know. Which would be worse? Not being able to buy the Timberwolves or marrying J-Lo again? Because then he loses. I mean, one way he keeps all of his money, the other way he loses half of it. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> she might be worth more than him, so I don't know. I don't know how that works. Well, this time he doesn't have to necessarily marry her, right? Like, she's maybe a little gun-shy at this point. She should be, yeah. A great rock band once said, once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> that didn't end well for that guy. <laughs> it did not. Things did not well end well for that dude. That was the fire, right? The fire at the yeah. Too soon. If you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> what was the name of that bar? I don't know. I just know the just band. Search, just search Great the Great White. White Fire. Great White Fire, Baltimore is your Google search. I'm pretty sure it was I thought it was in like Rhode Island. And then then don't look at it because you don't want to. Oh, it is right. Rhode Good call. What is your uh the betting line is six and a half for the Vikings right now. Do you think they'll have more than six and a half wins? Get it on tape, get it on record. No. Peter, that means they have to win seven. I do not think they will have more than six and a half, if I should can state that clearly. <laughs> I'll say I'll, I'll say if if Darnold is bad, it'll be five and twelve. If Darnold is decent, I could say eight and nine. So five or eight. Those are my picks. That's your range. Not a range, just one of those two. It won't be in between. <laughs> what exclusive aura. 
I just don't see it. Schwartzy, are you ready to commit? Defense you wins championships. Defense wins championships. Yep. And defense. We're going to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Money up, with, baby. Get those beats out. With the scant defensive backfield, seven and ten. Seven and ten. I'm going to be the ray of sunshine here. Uh, on, on the bright side, maybe McCarthy will get a haircut as part of his rehab. Do you not like a guy, a guy can dream? Got to stay heart throbby looking, though. Yeah. Can we convince him to get the Caesar? <laughs> just just, do the, like, just tell him to do the full buzz cut. You know, he'll be that's what guys do when they're in rehab do the buzz cut and just keep it for the rest of your life. It's that easy. Well, what do you think, old man? You're, you're the one that hasn't prognosticated. I feel like they get seven, I feel like they yeah. barely get the over. Uh, I'm looking at that. Schedule. I'm like, that's loss, loss, <laughs> loss. But if you looked at last year's schedule, we thought there was a chance they won the first five games. I think we stopped at the that's Chiefs. Not helping your argument. <laughs> that's <laughs> not what's that? It's really not helping at all. And then we won two games with you know guys that we got off the scrap heap wow. that weren't Joe Flacco. That's so true. we got at least two in there. <laughs> Where do you find five more? You can figure they're going to split with the Bears. They got yeah. the the Giants. The, the Colts are iffy. I, I don't know about that one. Jacksonville's iffy. Colts at home, at yeah. least. See, I think they'll. I think they'll beat Seattle. I don't think Seattle's got enough. Either. Titans aren't great. Titans, no, yeah, Titans that's are they, I, I mean, I can see Jonah, there's, there's Jonah here. We own them here. Yeah. Jags in 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 Jacksonville. There it depends which Trevor Lawrence you get that day. I mean, he could be injured. He could be. Yeah. He could have cut his hair. He could have won buzz cut. So you're Marcel. thinking. You're taking the over, though. You think? I'm taking the barely over. Okay. Me too. And Edgar, you were what? You were over. I'm I'm hedging. I'm He's saying either five sides. or eight. <laughs> so, uh, five or eight, but not in between. But if you have to pick one of those, no, I, I think is totally I think it's I think it's harder to pick two if they're not next to each other. <laughs> so hard? I can throw two numbers out as well. Are you? Are you? My question is: Are you leaning at Darnold? Darnold's going to be good, or Darnold's going to be bad? I, I I think if Darnold's healthy, I think he'll be better than people expect, and I think the eight will be more likely. And with my luck, that's what it's going to be because then they won't be able to get a top cornerback in the draft next year. Do we? Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to get like Travis Hunter or something like that. So do we? Uh, if we put numbers on Darnold between starts, yards, touchdowns, what are we thinking? I, I'm going to say I'm going to say 13 starts, 3,200 yards, 3,100 yards, and like 21 touchdowns. 13 starts, 3,100 yards, 21 touchdowns. I'll say 15 starts. I don't – the yardage thing is meaningless to me. I don't have any idea what's good or bad for yardage. I will say uh, 24 touchdowns, 7 interceptions in 15 starts. <laughs> well, I'll put 13 interceptions in the 13 starts. That, that's what where I was going to – yeah. He's double-digit on his picks. Mm-hmm. How about starts, TDs? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so the rest of the, realm, the line – I'm going to say same range, 14 starts for fun, right? Um, he's going to he's going to have 3,500 yards because um, I think he's going to get the benefit of again some. We got some legs out there, right? We've got some track stars. Um, he's going to have I, I think 22 touchdowns, but I am going to go high on on the interceptions with 13, 14 interceptions. So maybe that's maybe that's the prediction. Then uh, will Darnold have double digit interceptions, assuming he plays most of the season? I don't see how he you guys are you guys are saying yes. I've said no. You don't think he will, even if he plays like fifteen games. I, I think I think the better offensive line, better receivers, better coaching. I think that might solve his interception problem. So you're saying not only is it like less than one per game, like you're talking a half an interception a game, one every it's, other game. It, it does occasionally happen where a quarterback will go through a game without throwing an interception. So I think I, I think I think there's the idea that Darnold has to throw one a game is a little bit it's a little bit misleading, but yes, it is possible. <laughs> it is. I agree with you. Uh, yeah, it's just we're with Sam Darnold versus you know most starters in the league. That's where I have a. I'm time. I'm 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 betting on a new Sam Darnold. I'm betting on improvement. Yeah. So I don't care what he did with the Jets or the Panthers when they were the worst teams in the league. No, Panthers do suck. Something to be said for that. Yes. That team is bereft of talent. I do have a prediction, though, too, to say we double our output, double our output on rushing touchdowns this year. 15. That's probably That's a safe bet. No, I'm okay with that. I back that. I like it. I'll do we need to do it like do the we... Vikings? I didn't predict, but much like the Vi- or much like the 
Jets. Uh, Sam Darnold's going to injure in the first couple plays of the game. First game. <laughs> Why? Because of the, it's the Vikings. But then, Pete will get, but then Pete will get his dream of a season watching Nick Mullins just chuck oh. it. Every and then month. immediately Nick Mullins goes in and he's <laughs> catastrophically injured. Okay. And, that, and that's when you call Tom Brady. Yeah, <laughs> Can we take stock of who's been injured in the past 18 months for this team? I'm sorry, 12 months. Uh, uh, JJ. Yeah. I don't think we have enough time. JJ. <laughs> Kirk. Our, our first round draft choice. And then, you know, Hawk's not coming back. No. We had a cornerback die. <laughs> A, a, a guy ever played a game for us. I, I mean, how much more in the injury front can Two you other quarterbacks, get? right? In free agency, yeah, no. Nope. But we, you know, picked up a ancient uh, Gilmore, so we'll be fine. If he has anything left in the tank, we'll see. We shall see. What about Viking of the Year? What do you guys? You got any money on anybody? Mm. This might be one of those down years where the history will forget whoever we pick anyway, unless we pick Johnny Munt for the third year running. I mean, we, we I don't think we've ever done a quarterback. We could give it all to Sam Darnold because the season's going to ride on him anyway. Doesn't he have to not have played in the league more than a couple of years? I mean, but did he technically play in the league when he was with those with the Jets and the Panthers? That's more of a, a world football league situation. Yeah. Matt Corral qualifies then. I'd say I'd say Darnold or the rookie kicker because most of these games will probably come down to field goals anyway. Yeah, I like Will Record. As the Viking of the year, I think I think there's a chance he's a he's a Pro Bowler. Wow, that might be wow. our hottest take of the Man. podcast. <laughs> For those we're who are dude, still listening, you know times we're gonna get in the red zone and not punch it in. That dude's gonna get opportunities. Yeah, that is true. I I could say red Just zone say offense. It. We are in the bottom. <laughs> we're in the bottom ten in red zone. Yeah. So it's like well, well they also said that he doesn't have the strongest leg. If it's anywhere outside the red zone, they're not gonna kick it. Reichardt is a super, super strong leg. Nah. They said 50, just, 50 plus that you're not going to. Well, that's dumb. I swear I read it somewhere. That dude, had, he was kicking bullets out there. Like, he, when he in one of the preseason games, kicked like a 55 yarder and went like in at the top of the. Of he the got his first one blocked, too. He had a nice, a couple nice ones today on the radio. He went to Alabama, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was literally the oh. top kicker. Top point scorer so, in college. So is he going to be depressed from the pay cut he had to take coming into the NFL? Well, could that affect his, his his game? Allegedly. No, it's legal now. Not when he was in college. Well, he kicked a 57-yarder today. Mm-hmm. All right, I must be thinking of someone else then. Yeah, because he, he's got a boot. He definitely has a leg on him. I must be thinking of one of the Carlsons. Oh, maybe, yeah. No, I, I, that, that, that's going to be my, my hot take for this season is Will Reichard, Pro Bowler. Will Reichard. I'll go for that's a fun one. I like that. liking the year that I can yeah. remember. Throwing it out there, he's gonna say that he's he's gonna be the reason we win a game or two. That's Why don't you guys point. like guys named Tristan? That's all I'm asking. Because <laughs> there's too many Jacksons on the team. Already. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if either of them are gonna make the team. I think Tristan does, but Tristan, Tristan. Well, he's the, I think he's the bigger one, so I think he's more uh, of like a red zone kind of. That's why he's had three touchdowns and three pieces in games. But Although I, I like the idea of Nikhil Harry, otherwise it's Viking of the Year coming in before Hawk, getting some, you know, being that uh, hybrid wide receiver, tight end guy, sneaking in some some red zone touches, having to switch positions. He was out there today, yeah. which is probably any chance, any chance that Lucky or McLovin and or McLovin make the team. <laughs> Who's McLovin? McLovin, the uh, the dude that's the uh, defensive back. He's been a defensive star. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lewisine, obviously, again, uh, very much looking forward to that. You know how he comes back on on onto things, hopefully. Yep. Um, but this McLovin guy, he's been playing his heart out the whole preseason. Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting. Like the, it sounds like they're almost more excited for a couple of the uh, undrafted free agents, like him between McLaughlin and Levi making the team and actually being playable. Than uh, the guys that they actually they actually <laughs> tracked. Like I don't know if Dallas Turner played today. He didn't have a stat. I don't think so. No, we have a Dallas Gant on the team. Well, say you took our offense versus our defense and you ran it through a simulator. Does the offense ever score on our defense? I mean, eventually. I think. I mean, that just might be one of those unfortunate things where because Flores is probably a better coach than the offensive coordinator, even though I think our offensive talent, when healthy, is better. Yeah. But Flores is probably good enough that the defense would win that. Someone will have a catastrophic season-ending injury in that scenario. 
So no, we're not Multi- doing multiple people. It would be multiple last people. play, walking off the field after. Yeah. How many, how many quarterbacks are we have gone through in sixteen games by the end of the season? No, oh, how many will start this year? I I I say two. Yeah, that that would be my money too. So. You might get your Nick wish. Maybe that's the bet. What what'll be bigger? The number of starting quarterbacks for the Vikings or their number of wins? Because if quarterbacks start going down, those numbers are going to get really close. Yeah, I, all I got to say is if Matt Coral is ever on the field, I'm done watching. I don't think he's going to make the team. team. <laughs> I think they just brought him in a couple days ago so they'd have two quarterbacks for the game today. You think he'll be practice squad even? No, I when think he'll, I think he'll say right? thanks for the check. I put in my my four days of work and I'm going home. I think Hall's yeah. looked too good the last couple times he's been out there. Unfortunately, yeah. I, I mean, I want Hall to succeed, but. We well, don't think a lot of people don't think uh, Reisner is going to make the cut. So there's decent players that. How? Like, Why? Because of his attitude? Yeah, mostly because of his attitude. Does he have an attitude? Like, he well, he, he's he's mad that he they wait so long to like call him in all the time. Basically. Yeah, but they shouldn't. It was stupid that they did. <laughs> like from my perspective, like he played well last year. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> understand it. Yeah, there's quite a few. Oh, the Vikings like blogger websites that are saying that he's most likely not making the cut, but we'll see. Uh, dumb. We'll find out tomorrow or Tuesday, I guess. Tuesday, technically. But uh, how quickly does he take to Twitter? Yeah, Tuesday's cut day. But he he might find out sooner than that if he needs to find a job somewhere. Ugh. They might not wait. I'm not excited to wait two weeks for game one. Well, luckily the Gophers play on Saturday. And we got a the Wolves coming up here in the next month and a half. Color me pumped. That's that's our next podcast. It's Wolves preseason. We'll, we'll entitle it "No No Time for Preseason Part 2. <laughs> no, no time for the apple orchard today. Got to record. <laughs> <laughs> no time for pickleball. I pulled my Achilles. <laughs> no pumpkin spice for you. No. Isn't the whole purpose of pickleball that that you don't actually have to move because the the court is so small? It's for lazy. It's lazy people tennis. Isn't that it? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, don't move as much. So your Achilles are safe. Yeah, sure. sure. Safe no, sure. there's there's a lot of there's a lot of quick to twitch. Uh, it's moves. yeah, it's more like jab step left, jab step right, run up three or four steps, run back three or four steps. Yeah, you can still fall over the front of the net. I have not, but I did you stub my toes trying to stay out of the kitchen once. Yeah, kind of one of my tippy toes, and that didn't work out so well. What, what happened? I stubbed my toes. I don't know what else to tell you, man. I tried to you stab your toes. I literally put oh, my toes yeah. down and I sprained like two toes. <laughs> you Again, you sprained. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fat 47 year old man. I'm not the most athletic uh, person out there. Decent at the net. I got I got decent reaction time, I think, yet, yeah, but more with the hands versus like, oh, the ball's four feet that way. I got to run that, you know, run a couple of no. There's times I'm like, uh, we'll let him have that point. <laughs> that looks like a, a good way to get hurt trying to get to that ball. You just make shaft run is what you're saying? That's the, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, I'm like, I'll play up from top. You go, you play in the back. And I just do this. <laughs> you're like you're like a weed sweat tennis player. You're just always I'm like, yeah, the, the inflatable things at uh, car dealerships. Like that's, that's what I do. Just put a racket in my hand and I swing my arms around. Fan man. I did play with my brother, and we played against uh, Schaff and one of his kids. It was funny. Bob at the net is uh, something else. <laughs> Covered a lot of ground without having to cover much ground. Yeah. It's like, all right, he's got this. Like, playing him at the net, it's like, he, he can span, you know. <laughs> a lot of smashes. It wasn't as many as you would have thought. He, he, yeah, but yeah, he, uh, it's hard to get it by. I'll put it that way. Maybe he doesn't always get a clean paddle on it, but clean racket. But he was hard to get it by. Quarter court of the podcast, getting a clean battle on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking you and Bob really should start a pickleball podcast to just talk nothing but pickleball. That way it's easier for me to know what I don't have to listen to. <laughs> you could also entitle it Pickles and Balls. Pickles and Balls are out of the kitchen. In the kitchen? I don't know. In the kitchen with pickles and balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that works out because the Golden tall one is the pickle and the short round one is the balls. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys start calling me the balls, hey, where's the balls at? We'll have a conversation. Well, we have to now. <laughs> Good job, balls. Does this segment make the cut? Oh, this is def- <laughs> definitely making the cut. 
So we're saying no playoffs for the Vikings? No, no chance. Not a chance? In 25. Is there a chance they make the playoffs in 25? No. I agree with Edgar on the draft pick thing. Depending on where we ended up in the draft? I think so. What what position would you – looking at the current roster and not what happens for Corner. 16? Cornerback. Corner. <laughs> Unless I, I, Does anybody players... take corner that early anymore, though? Oh, yeah. Players might players might tell their agents, "Don't let the Vikings draft me." I know what happens to cornerbacks that go to the Vikings. <laughs> well, Sauce Gardner was just two years ago. He was drafted one fourth. And uh, who was the guy that was hurt going into the draft um, from LSU? He was drafted like seventh two years ago. So yeah, I mean, I think if Travis Hunter is like a guy that'll go top five, right? But is that guy going to make you that good to get you into the playoff? If he's well, that and the cap space and getting yeah. McCarthy back, hopefully, and getting Hawkinson healthy and uh, we already McCaffrey not McCaffrey. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's tough if you don't have a, especially. I mean, think of all the good wide receivers that are out there now, and like the, every year, it just seems like there's more. There's like five, six wide receivers drafted in the first round this year. Yeah, it's yeah. nuts. Mm-hmm. I don't. And last year wasn't much different. I think you, if you don't have at least one good corner, you're that's just so much pressure in your defense to try to collectively guard, defend all these guys. You need at least one guy that are like, okay, you're fine. So we can double up or focus on helping out elsewhere. And Harry's most likely going to retire after the season. I would guess. I would, I would think so. So you're going to have to, we have decent guys backing up in safety, but yeah. And you'll I, figure that out too. Yeah. Hitman is definitely playing that venerable, you know, yeah, he's, 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 getting he's there to teach everybody when it comes down to it. I don't know how much we can lean on that to be our, uh, you know, to your point, Peter, the, 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 he's 35, right? He's a rookie in 2012. So I don't know what. It's pretty close to 35. Yeah. Yeah. So he's oh, like 35. Yeah. He's 35 covering uh, any of the top 20 receivers in the NFL right now. Yeah. How does he match up against those guys? He's not a corner, but. Yeah. Right. It, it, to be able to cover or get 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 it one on one with any of those guys, like he's, he's in huge. You think trouble. he declares at the beginning of the season that it's his last season? And he does like a farewell tour, a la Derek Jeter, and they like yeah. give him a piece of Lambeau Field and shit. Yep. I, I don't think he's famous enough to pull that. He's like Honestly. Kareem, right? I, th- I I think if that announcement went out league wide, half the GMs would say, "Who?" <laughs> I'm just saying the central central teams, not all the teams. Uh, okay. Sir, aren't you one of the coaches on the team? Is what? Well, sure, this is sure. Harrison, like, he's like he looks like a coach. Yeah, I, I, you could e- easily see that dude transitioning into like the secondary uh, into the secondary coaching staff, right? Yeah. Well, I, they were doing the math on it, and he he's closer to KOC's age than any player on the team. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, they probably hang out more too than anybody else. So if the Vikings aren't going to win, who's going to win the division? Detroit Lions. Be Lions again. I think it's Lions. Packers, Bears, probably in that order. Well, I'm, but I think the Vikings I'm, I'm could sneak in. Do you think the Bears yeah. have more wins than the Vikings at the end of the season? Bears win 10 games. If, if Caleb is, stays healthy, yes. If Caleb does not stay healthy, they're fucked. Because they had offensive weapons and nobody would nobody get them the ball. So. Do they have a good enough defense to win that many games? Don't I don't think. think. Yeah, I don't know. Their line, their defensive line. The line, yeah, but I like the rest of the defense. Like, they can get pressure, but. Going to keep people people out of the end zone, I guess. I don't know if it matters because the Vikings are just probably going to be so future defensively that sure <laughs> they'll probably get eight nine wins. Well, I they think got, their, their they defense will great for three quarters with Justin Fields, right? So, um, all right, Lions, Packers, Bears. Yep. Who wins the whole kit and caboodle other than Kansas City this year? Well, that's tough. Other than Kansas City, yeah. Make a prediction. A bold. Oh, I'm going to go with my dream scenario from last year and just a Detroit Cleveland Super Bowl, and I would go with Detroit. <laughs> Your heart goes with Detroit? Sure. I feel worse for them than I do for Cleveland fans. But if you had to become another fan, you would become a Browns fan? Is that still yeah, true? I'm st- uh, it's still true. There's a lot of factors in play. It I know, success is not a factor. There is a lot of scales of justice going on for you. I was yeah. just wondering where everything was playing out there for you. Nope, still Cleveland. I think, I think it's Kansas City Niners in the Super Bowl. Not so. Not uh, is that a three peat? No, it wasn't Kansas three, City. Yeah, years that ago. was three, four years ago, 2018 okay. season. Gotcha. I don't know. I just think they're the best, two best rosters. Well, even if, if KC isn't the best roster, the, the Mahomes factor is real, and their defense was way better last year. Yeah. And they have more offensive talent. 
Possibly. Well, Rice, I'm sure Rice will be suspended for a few games at the start of the year, so that's not it, great for them. Kennedy's not suspended this year. Like it's, I would, I'm everything yeah. I've heard, like they're speculating that's a 2025 season. There's also a chance that Travis Kelsey is on the decline, though, too. 100. percent he is. Yeah, I mean, he's 34, five. On a real decline, like that yeah. people can actually stay with him and defend him a little bit. But if they had more talent around him, it doesn't, you know, that lessens the impact. Last year, had he fallen off a cliff, that would have been. I'm just saying, all those guys are unproven. Even Hollywood Brown isn't like yeah. a number one wide receiver in anybody's. I, don't know. I mean, I, I just, if you, if you put a decent defense around him, around Mahomes, I don't know how much it matters. Like, he's still going to be a top 14. I don't know. Who's the, who's the coordinator? Uh, is it Spags? Spags? Whatever. It was. Steve Spagnolo. Yeah. It's, how is he not a head coach somewhere again because he's blown it previously as a head coach no i know but like he's also got them to how many super bowls recently guys get second chances it was bien i mean pretty much before then right are you gonna edit our edit out the part where you where you say white guys get chances so it just sounds like you said guys get chances yeah yeah white guys get chances okay eric the guy's name eric don't get chances sad sad I say the Texans scare the Chiefs, but the Chiefs are undoubtedly going back to the Super Bowl. I think the Texans are the new up and comers in the AFC. Yeah, Texans are going to make it. They're going to make it interesting. The Bills, I think Ravens too. I think the Ravens will be strong. The AFC is definitely tougher. It's more. I think it's more of a muddled top eight than the the NFC. I like their defenses more too. But and Niners Lions again, AFC Championship. Or an NFC championship. I mean, and, and Eagles maybe are right there, but it's kind of those three. I don't. I'm not a believer in Dallas. I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say Detroit and Green Bay. The well, they can't be one and two, obviously, because same division. But I think they could have the best records in the NFC. Probably the two best teams in the NFC. I think the Eagles are on their way down. Dallas. I don't. Doesn't impress me at all. San Francisco is getting probably bored with losing Super Bowls. I could see. Yeah. NFC Detroit, South. Green Bay. NFC South is pretty trash. It's, isn't right. it the Falcons' division to lose now? Kind of, right? And I mean, Kirk Kirk didn't play a freaking down in the preseason, right? Like so I, six wonder, years in a row, he hasn't. You wonder since they took they held uh, Penix out after the first game, like if they're. I mean, that's what I, the speculation was. They're they don't believe Kirk's healthy yet, so they're holding Penix out so he doesn't get hurt, so he can start in Week One. So it'll be interesting. Let's just say I'm not putting a lot of money in Kirk from a fantasy perspective. As talented as he can be if he's upright. I'm going to have to sign up, boys. I got Mormon yep. wedding to prepare yeah. for. I'll see you in a couple hours, Shorts. Yeah. Have fun staying sober, buddy. Kiss the brides for us. No secret underwear for that. I will say that, not for me. <laughs> that, was a, that, was a, that was a plural bride. Uh, no. Plural. Plural bride. Is, is the whole sheets people? I, I was trying to be uh, anti, anti-Mormon there for a minute. Multiple brides for multiple... I don't know how that goes. Yeah. All right. See you, everyone. Enjoy the NFL. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Later. There's no time for last requests. Ain't nobody got time for that. Look, Betty, I've got no time for games today. Now, now there's no time for a bench test. Heat them up.